Hello and welcome to the Women's Network. I'm Elke and I'm your host. Again, this is the Women's Network on which we discuss, discuss women's issues and women of interest. And today we have a wonderful show for you. It is about a woman who, is, uh, who was, unfortunately, very, very interesting. And uh, with that, we want to enter the world of art. We will today discuss the portrait of Frida Kahlo. And with me, I have Gregorio Lucchi. He is with the uh, Council General of Mexico here in Los Angeles. And uh, he has studied Frida Kahlo to quite some degree that uh, he will be able to inform us as to uh, her life and her artwork and uh, much, much more. So let me uh, go and introduce you to our guest, Gregorio Luco. Hello, Gregorio. Hello, Elke. So nice to have you here. Gregorio, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came about uh, lecturing on Frida Kahlo? I'm in uh, the Council for Cultural Affairs in the Council General of Mexico in Los Angeles. And uh, as part of the programs of outreach that we do in universities and schools, we try to promote the art of Mexico and the uh, legacy of our greatest artists, such as Frida Kahlo and others, uh, Diego Rivera, Sor Juan Inés de la Cruz. Uh, before uh, this position in Los Angeles, I worked at our embassy in Washington, uh, doing basically the same thing. And uh, I believe, we believe it's very important not only to share the work or the art or the biography of an artist, in this case of Frida Kahlo, but also to speak to you about the cultural background and the, the country in mm -hmm. Mexico, the many influences, in the case of Frida Kahlo, from the pre-Hispanic art to the most modern paintings that shape her. In other words, it is important to speak about Mexico and Mexico's culture in its relation with uh, Frida Kahlo that uh, is a very popular uh, artist in the United States. More and more Frida has become a, a symbol. Right, um, I meant to ask, what, what brings Frida Kahlo out to the forefront? What, what is it about her? In fact, just a few years ago, we had sort of like a wave right here in Los Angeles about Frida Kahlo. What is it that stands out just at a glance? Well, the first and foremost, Frida Kahlo is an excellent artist. Her works are extremely powerful. But there are other elements at play also. Uh, Mexico is a country that blends many cultures, from the union of the Spanish and the Indian, uh, and the fusion of these different sensitivities. We have a new culture that is different from, from these and is original. And Frida Kahlo embodies in her work and in her persona, all these many uh, influences. I, I would say that she is the best example that I know of a truly multicultural artist. And I believe this is very appealing to, to uh, especially in, in a context like the one we are living, in which you have many cultures that are blending and, and coming together. I would also say that Frida Kahlo had a very difficult time in her life. Yeah. She um, experienced constant pain, had uh, a, a very severe accident, but she was able to overcome all of these uh, problems and to somehow uh, sublimate them in her art. When you read Frida's letters, when you read, uh, when you read the descriptions that friends made of her, 
She always comes across as somebody that is very, that is full of energy, that is uh, a creative force, a, a force of optimism, a, a force of energy. Uh, it is very telling that in her last painting she, in, she writes the phrase, Viva la vida, long live life, right. yeah. even if she was yeah. suffering uh, yeah. great pain. So I think that she's also an inspiration. Now, um, she also, um, I don't know whether, I want to say she was very lucky to uh, be married to uh, Diego Rivera, because that was also a sort of like a strained relationship there. But was he, being the great artist that he was, was he sort of like a mentor to her? or? Um, did she pick up art before she met him? Uh, how, how did this union uh, start out? Diego Rivera was an established and famous artist when he meets uh, Frida Kahlo. But from the very beginning, when he sees her, her works, he is very impressed by, by her and, and he encourages her. And their personal relationship uh, was difficult, as you say, but there was also a great deal of professional respect mm -hmm. between them. Frida Kahlo was one of the very few people that Diego Rivera listened to in professional matters. And I must say that even though they had a constant dialogue, uh, the work of Frida Kahlo is very different from the work of Diego Rivera. Uh, is very personal, it, it communicates different things, uh, it's a very intimate work. Yeah, from what I understand, I mean, I do not know that much about Frida Kahlo, and that's why we have you here, but she, she painted a lot from her personal f feelings and her personal life, like she, for instance, painted her, her agony as far as pain is concerned, and uh, her ups and downs with uh, Diego Rivera. And uh, uh, can you uh, talk about that a little bit? Like, where did, where did her paintings come from? I mean, is, is it from, from her inner? I feel like it was from her inner, or from what I heard, it was from her, for her inner feelings. And, her surroundings? Uh, I would like to say in, in, in this, uh, it is important to point out that Frida did communicate uh, aspects that she was living and expressed them, her yeah. pains yeah. and all of this in her work. But this is not the only source of her painting. I see. Sometimes uh, her life is so intense that we tend to explain it only through her biography, when in fact it is much broader than this, because she brings into her work uh, the many influences of Mexican culture to express something personal. Uh, we have, for example, an image right now of uh, the goddess of fertility. Yes, yes. And here you see uh, a painting that Frida creates that is in, called My Birth. That is something personal, very dramatic, but that is enriched by that art that she's incorporating. She also uh, brings into her work the Spanish and the European tradition. Uh, that are also reflected. And not only is she capable of bringing to her work the so-called educated art or the art of the, pop the elite, so to speak, but also popular works. Uh, for example, uh, she uh, incorporates some of the uh, religious work, the retablos or the milagros these paintings that are done in, uh, as a way of thanking uh, in, and are placed in the churches. And 
in this occasion we see a, a, a typical ex voto that they are called that show what happened and, and then in, in write in letters and describe the moment. Frida sometimes uses the same technique, the same idea, to communicate something different. But her work, as I say, reflects not only her life, but also her culture. And I believe this is very important. Here we see a painting that Frida uses the technique of the retable. In other words, her painting reflects as much about herself as it does about the culture and the country that nourished her. Wonderful. I think she was uh, uh, very much an expressionist. And uh, a lot of uh, artists called her a, a surrealist. Can you uh, uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Um? The first uh, international recognition that she receives is precisely through the surrealists. When André Breton uh, right. comes to Mexico in the late 1930s, and he sees some of Frida's works, he's very impressed and he considers her a surrealist. And she later has an exhibit in, in New York in the Julian Levy Gallery, and after that in Paris. And yet, uh, Frida would say that she was not a surrealist because she did not paint dreams. She painted her own reality, right. she would say. She does have some aspects in common with the surrealists especially in her diary that has recently been published, in which she would express or she would paint that the first things that came to her mind, she would, uh, in a similar manner to this uh, so-called automatic writing of the surrealists, you know, that, that liberates the uh, subconscious and the, the universe of the dreams. So I think that, yes, she, she incorporates some elements of surrealism. But again, her work speaks to us about herself, her reality, uh, her culture. Let's go a little bit into uh, uh, Frida Kahlo as uh, a person. Uh, what type of person was she? Was she uh, uh, knowing that she was in a bad accident and suffered a great deal of pain? Uh, was she a, an up or a down uh, person? I mean, how, uh, for instance, in her marriage to Diego Rivera, let's go into her personal life a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what type of person was she? Also, did she have a family? Did she want to, or, you know, let's talk about that a little bit and uh, how much was family life, how important was family life to her? I know she had a sister and a brothers. Uh, can we talk about that a little bit? Mm -hmm. The pattern that we find constantly in Frida's life is this ability to survive, to find a way out of her problems. Before, many years before uh, her accident, when she was a little girl, she suffered from polio, and she was confined in a bed for many months. So she more or less, before her accident, she, she had already was, suffered. She already suffered. Yes, right. and uh, some of her most famous works, when, when explaining them, the, she often paints this double image of herself, a very famous work called The, the Two Fridas, right. and many others in which she presents a double image of herself. And once when she was trying to explain the reason that she paints this double image, she would say that when she was a little girl and she was sick in bed, she uh, imagined a friend that came and visited with her and played with her and, and, and took her to many places that she had never been before. What, what amazes me is, is this ability to create in spite of pain to never feel sorry for herself. Later, uh, precisely one of the sequels of the accident that she has is uh, precisely 
her becoming an, an artist. Frida becomes an artist, or shall I say, begins to paint while she is recovering from that accident. Yes. And uh, the way she dresses. Uh, she had uh, problems in her legs, but she dresses in these wonderful Mexican costumes that somehow mask her own uh, problems. And that in a way, and I think that this is another reason why she is so appealing, is that she is able to invent herself, to create a persona named Frida Kahlo. And I can say that, that in her l other interesting elements of her personality is that Frida Kahlo combines apparently opposite roles. She is indeed a, a feminist. She's very independent. She's somebody that uh, has her own opinion, her own artistic expression. And yet she is also uh, somebody that is, so to speak, uh, very feminine in, in the way she dresses, in the way she uh, prepares a meal or prepare a house. She was never able to have children, which is one of her uh, obsessions yeah. in her paintings. Uh, but she's very close to children of all kinds and, and to life in general. Constantly you see this uh, intensity in her works. In, her vision that is a vision that, that loves life, that is full of energy, that is, is full of courage. So more or less she, she was a very much of an alive person even though she had some tragedies uh, growing up and throughout her life, which I think is uh, very commendable for her to uh, it is very commendable for her to uh, be that type of person. Let me give you another, another example. At the end of her life, uh, she, she was suffering enormously. You know, she had had a, a very painful uh, back surgery, uh, many, many problems. And she had never had an individual exhibit in Mexico. And so her friends that see that she's so ill organize this exhibit, never expecting her to show up. And yet when they arrive, they see her bed and then they hear uh, a siren and they bring Frida on a stretcher. How and they wonderful. place her in her bed. She's perfectly dressed. And her friends know that she is, is, is uh, dying, that she's ill, that she's... But Instead of letting anybody have pity on her, she makes them sing, She's ex she drives them to almost an ecstasy of joy all around her. Uh, some of those who attended that opening say that the crowd was so ener energetic, so ecstatic, that they were worried that they might hurt her. Another example, after they amputated part of her legs because she developed gangrene. She would do a small painting in which she would say, uh, pies para que los quiero si tengo alas pa volar feet. What do I need you for if I have wings to fly? Yes, I heard about that statement. It was wonderful, just wonderful. So more or less, I mean, she, she sounds like a very strong person, a very strong person. And maybe, uh, uh, that's what um, what uh, showed in her paint in her paintings as well. I'm following a little bit what we're going through on the screen, and uh, they're all very impressive and very strong pictures. Very much of a story behind each picture, and uh, like you said earlier throughout the show that. Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo came from two different worlds as far as their paintings are concerned. What type of painter was he? What, uh, we, we would need a whole program need, or several <laughs> programs <laughs> several. to speak about yeah, but, uh, uh, just, just Diego to Rivera. Diego Rivera is... Uh, I mean, he, he, like you said earlier too, he did not really have any influence as far as her style was concerned. However, he encouraged her 
a great deal as far as uh, so um, more or less even though he encouraged her she did not take on any of his Tio Rivera uh, is, is one of the the most complete artists of Mexico he's a man that has uh, lived in Paris and Europe for 15 years was a part of the Cubist movement and when he returns to Mexico he is uh, part of what we call the muralist movement together with other artists such as Siqueiros wh whose 100th anniversary we are celebrating this year or Orozco they are part of, of, a, of a mission to take art to the people this is a, a movement that is promoted precisely by Jose Vasconcelos and they create enormous paintings in the libraries, in the public buildings, uh, sponsored by uh, the, the state, the Mexican state, to disseminate uh, and, to, and, to, and to educate and, and as a part of a, of a cultural crusade. And so R Rivera works in a very large format. Right. In, in huge mm -hmm. murals or even his, his uh, easel paintings. Right. Whereas Frida works in a very small form. Well, Most of, of, of Frida's paintings, with s very few exceptions, are done in a very uh, small format. And also, whereas Diego addresses the history of Mexico, the macrocosmos, right. the social classes, the workers, uh, a painting that, that tends to, to reflect about the movements of society. Frida's themes are very personal. She tends to speak to us about herself. That's right. And through, her, through this expression about the culture. But they're very different not only in, in the scale, but also in the meaning and in the subject. I must add that when asked, Diego Rivera would always say that the better painter among them was Frida Kahlo. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, he would admire her very much that's wonderful. throughout her life. Well, what um, we unfortunately only have about four or five minutes left. Time goes by very, very fast, and uh, I think we definitely have to have a second part and uh, maybe even a third part. But uh, before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, Frida Kahlo as far as how does Mexico feel about her now? I know her life was very, very brief. I mean, 47 years old is certainly not an age at all. Uh, she passed away in the 50s, 1950, 54. 54. How uh, does Mexico feel about Frida Kahlo now, now that she is gone? Has she become a, a bigger person even yet? or? Uh, is she sort of fading away? Uh, but like I said earlier, sh there seems to be a wave right now. I mean, Frida Kahlo is very much on the horizon here, that is. But we only have a couple minutes, so... Frida's presence is, is every day stronger. Uh, during her life, she was appreciated, but she wasn't as popular as she is now. I would say that this uh, rediscovery of her work is, is something that has occurred uh, in the recent decades. And now it is very strong. There are many new books that have been published about her. Uh, the excellent biography by Hayden Herrera. Uh, studies like Sarah Lowe's or like Marta Zamora. What about her diary? Is that Her diary was recently published, uh, I believe last year, with an introduction by Carlos Fuentes. There is a, a new museum uh, that is precisely by uh, Lola Olmedo, that is one of the most important collectors of Frida's works. 
And so this is recently opened in Mexico. Besides her house that has been a museum for some time now. And so I believe that there is increasingly a, 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 a more uh, books and scholarly studies about Frida Kahlo. Her work is also very much in demand. There is museums where one can see her work. And I, I think understand. She's increasingly uh, appreciated. Uh, I understand uh, um, the two houses that they had. One belonged to uh, Frida, and one belonged to Diego. At the end, uh, the one that belonged to her is now a museum. Is that right? Or well, both uh, the, the Casa Estudio Diego Rivera is right. a museum. And, that's and uh, the Mexico. Blue House, the Casa Azul, the blue house, right. uh, uh, where she was born and where she died, is also now uh, uh, a museum and it's open to the public. And But has been a museum for right. some time. The right. museum I was telling you is, is, is a new museum. Right. And in that's in Mexico Me City. In the south of Mexico, Mexico City, City, yes. In well, Social Gregorio, Media. I want to thank you so much for being so, man so informative about Frida Kahlo, our artist today and uh, I hope you can come back because I'm, I'm really curious about more of her life uh, in the, the later years even though as I said she unfortunately died very early but um, and you said early we have much more to discuss so would you come back and I'm uh, certainly it. willing and uh, thank you so much we are thank very you. interested in people knowing more about exactly her and studying more about right. her. well I want to thank uh, Gregorio Luco who is with the Luque who is with the uh, consulate of Mexico here in uh, Los Angeles he is the uh, consulate or the council for cultural affairs and I want to thank all of you my audience for being with us today it was uh, very very informative to me so I hope you felt the same and we will follow up with the second uh, part to this show and uh, until uh, we see you again bye bye <laughs>